So yeah, this is this is our symbol for the new year of directus, direct communication. Because mm. time is such a waste of time. It's just it's well, the mind makes it what it seems to be long, but everything's beating around the bush. There's no direct communication, and this one's really good because it applies direct communication and relationship together. So that's a good combination. Because communication really is never between people. Mm. It's, it's between you and the source. And then, and then your time is an attempt to block communion or commu true communication. So, when we see movies in which there's a much more direct symbol of communication, like cut the chase, cut the chase, let's get at it, let's get really direct. Let's give them something to talk about, I talk about love. Let's not waste any time. Yeah, let's not waste, waste any time. 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 This, is a, this is a like direct, direct, direct. You know? Yeah, which is, which is everything. Which is everything. So, so I think we'll, it'll be a great movie and we'll have a good, yeah, a great experience with it. So, some of you have seen it, some of us have not. Oh really? Some have not? Who, who hasn't, who seen, hasn't it? seen it? Who hasn't seen it? I don't think I've seen it. Oh really? I haven't seen it. I'm not sure that I've seen it straight through. EC, okay, very good. Okay, Enjoy. we have some newbies. Enjoy. Enjoy. Long, Long time ago. It's about Ira and Abby, I think. It is. <laughs> Ira and Abby. That's why the title. Yes. So, direct. Okay. Here Let's we go. Hit us with your best shot. How are you today, Doctor? Perfectly, acting it out beautifully. <laughs> he's, he's dependent, he's confused, he's conflicted, he doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't have good communication or clear communication, but he's got a prayer underneath it all. Help me. So let's see how the Holy Spirit uh, handles this human condition case. Of communication style. She's super direct and speaks everything just it comes right out of her mouth, but she's thinking and he's Mr. People please compromise and everything. So he races out, races out. <laughs> he's afraid of direct communication. Good luck, Ira. I hope there isn't a catch. Yeah. <laughs> and so it begins. That's it. The what? And so it begins. Yes, this is the death of the I hope there isn't a gap. Is a catch. A catch. catch. Oh. It's the past. Yeah. It's the past. <coughs> but he just was going there from gratitude. He just had this bursting gratitude. Before he couldn't, he was like, he couldn't, he didn't want to leave the place, but yeah. But he's looking at his face, yeah, that is a face uh -huh. like, what? What? He can't even fathom mm -hmm. what that reaction is. Hi, can we have the combo please, March and March? Sure, what kind of soda would you like with that? Right here, please. <laughs> Lisa and I saw it for the first time, we're like, oh. <laughs> I was a no private thoughts movie. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm.
You can see the healing, you can feel it. Feel the healing going on. Please get moving. That was definitely direct. Mm-hmm. We watched two movies today. One was not so direct. <laughs> direct. Yeah. That was the advantage of seeing them back to back. Yeah. A good contrast. What else did you watch? Timer. 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 We watched Timer, then we watched Ira and Abby back to back to see the the value of the directness. They got off to a great momentum and then it kind of just carried over with all the all the meetings. And then that great therapy session. <laughs> kind of like a, in the family style or something. Mm. Why do you get that? Some oh, the, what? Some, the family style? No. Oh, family stone. Family stone. Uh, I don't know why it reminded me of that. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah. That everybody had to come clean. At the yeah. End. yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's another movie that Jennifer Aniston did too called The Object of My Affection. Did you ever see that one? Mm-hmm. Where she starts off and she's with this guy Vinny and then she falls in love with a gay man, Paul Rudd. And then she has Vinny's baby, but she wants to have it with the gay man. And then, and all the things are swirling around, and it, it goes towards like the end of this one, where they had to stop judging each other and all fall in love, mm. in an all-inclusive love, instead of categorizing and judging and pushing people away, saying, no, I don't want that, or, you know, just all the typical ego things. It was really beautiful at the end, where it was like, you could see that they were all in each other's lives in a loving, respectful way, but not judging. Mm. Not being so caught up in the roles, not believing that the roles are who they are, so that they can enjoy the dance, feel the love and the appreciation, and not get stuck into taking sides and, you know, and live a, an intuitive life. A life inspired by spirit, trusting that the spirit's got you. Mm. The spirit's taking you. Whatever the con- this is the way the configuration looks right now, but in a quantum way, you know, it's really the whole cosmos is with us. Mm. We're we are the whole cosmos, and it just seems to be this configuration. But there has to be a higher trust that that everything is working together for the good. That there's no Nothing out of place. Mm. Nothing's ever been out of place. Nothing's ever been really wrong. It was just the perspective of seeing it all fragmented that that was insane. There's never anything wrong. That'll bring an end to the therapy. It's the way the Course says, This holy instant would I give to you, be you in charge, for I would but follow. It's like saying, I trust you, God. I trust that everything happened for a reason, and that as long as I believe in time, then I need to just come back to the here and now, and come back to the gratitude that it's all working. That's what you woke up with this morning. It's all in divine order. And how glorious I felt to wake up with that mm. thought. Like it's all. Yeah. All is in divine order. All is in divine order. Yeah, I love these movies that kind of take you, take you, take you, take you, take you. That's a big one. It's all in divine order. It's all in divine order. Really? Wow. And there were some big leaps, I mean, Abby, you know, let's get married. That was a big one. Wasn't that a big one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's such like a contrast with the other movie. It's kind of like, yeah, it's like, like you know, like with this song, timer. you know, like yeah. with the Waiting. timer, like I don't, it's almost like, mm, let's get together, uh, like or not, or what, yeah. like. So it's like, are we in purpose or not? Like, are we doing it or are yeah. we not? 
Are we committed to this or are we not committed to it? Yeah. So, yeah, and I was like... And we didn't even know at that point when she, when they were in the health club thing and she said, let's, let's get married. We didn't even know that she had two marriages and we didn't know any of that. We just, you just see her and she just says, I really like your face. She just started, it was just, everything was coming out yeah. uncensored. Yeah. Like, I like your face and touched it and then, and then very quickly after that, let's get married. It was like a leap of faith. Mm. It was like a huge leap of faith. It went all against all convention, you know. It was, that was a huge leap. So that seems to be a key towards that, it's all in divine order. Mm. Like there seems to be some kind of leap of faith that's required. It goes against everything. It goes against everything we've ever learned. That went, away, went against all kind of conventions, to say that. Like they had this, spent six hours together talking. Mm in a gym, in a health thing, and then, then it just rapidly, that's the clip that was pulled out for the teaching clip. We've seen that clip a lot of us, but I hadn't seen the movie, but that was good. We have our few revolver moments we pull out, but we see the movie revolver gives a larger context to the whole thing. That, this movie really gave a whole broader context to that leap. Isn't that amazing? That was very miraculous. That was like a catalyst. Something came through her in that moment, said, let's get married. And then just the prices to watch his reaction, just, he was just like, you know, he was squirming all over the place. But then, and then for him to say yes and go right to his parents and say, I'm getting married. That was a pretty big leap. Because all things considered, after 12 years in therapy, and nine years with, what's her name, Leah, and all things considered for him to dive in, there was some kind of presence underneath there for, for her to say, let's get married, and some kind of presence under there for him to say yes. And it wasn't, and then the movie showed it wasn't really about the marriage. That really wasn't what the leap was about. It had, there was something more important underneath than the marriage. Marriage was just the mechanism. It's like a mechanism of healing. They, cut off, they touched on all kinds of topics. Jealousy and envy. And the whole thing about old flames. Boy, they... <laughs> they Ran the gamut of those things. That was, that was good. Yeah, forgiving old flames. Yeah, forgiving. Making amends, her going and having, going to meet him for, to make amends, and then that brought up all of her stuff. Going and meeting somebody. There was a, a famous theologian in, the, in Europe, some of you might have heard of uh, St. Augustine. It goes back quite a few centuries. But St. Augustine had a famous line that came out of his mouth, and the line was, Love, and do what you will. That's a, to really live that. Mm. And Lisa and I have been talking about how this, astrologically, this is the year of love. love. We've, we've crossed over to the year of love. 2016 mm. is the year of love. It's about time. It's in the numbers. Are you ready for the year of love, huh? Yes, the whole stars, everything's aligned. And, and what would it's the year of love be, but full again. gratitude and appreciation. Oh, for when, everything. When somebody says something to you and announces something, to just re rejoice and celebrate with them. You can see, you know, that was a problem. Everybody was hiding <laughs> the private thoughts. But we're talking about letting them be openly revealed mm -hmm. with why. With a trust underneath that uh, the private thoughts can't hold you back from love. Mm -hmm. They can't. 
they can't, they can't hold you back. That's, that's a reason to not hide them and protect them. The only reason to try to push them down is the belief that they can sabotage your mind. Mm. But they don't have the power to do that. That's really good news. Lisa was saying today though too, even with the expressions, it's like, come on, come on! Enough, enough! <laughs> then the therapist opens up. <laughs> He's sitting there for all those years of therapy. It's time we end this. <laughs> but, but you would end the theater of private thoughts with love. It's the only way that the theater of private thoughts could end, is in love. It's not ending other, any other way. Yeah. It reveals the love. Mm. Yeah. That's underneath all of it. It does. Mm. It really reveals it. Yeah, it's precious. It's interesting for me because I just had this feeling earlier tonight, and I guess you guys were already watching this, but like that I had this feeling like, did I want to contact Ola? Because I had that, ex I was like Abby last year <laughs> with him. It didn't work out that way, but it. I was just. Like this, I couldn't stop talking, and like it was so helpful for me. I had all these feelings I never had before, and all these things, and then even had feelings of jealousy, things that I never really experienced before, and like really high feelings, and then also that, like like jumping in feeling, really just jumping in and I couldn't stop and everyone was like, yeah, go for it, just keep saying things on it. Cheering you on. <laughs> I was like all strung out then at the end, like, and I think, you know, I had this belief that I freaked him out and um, and I, I was just telling Eric, like about two weeks ago, I said it was so strange, the whole time I could just keep seeing this, exp this things that I would do with him or that we would live out. <laughs> I had the same compulsion, I wanted to run home, bring him home to my family, like it was the exact same thing instantly, we were in Ireland and everything, it was like cocaine and I, I had these feelings and then, and then he got together with this girl and I was just showing Eric and she looks exactly like me and in every scene that I pictured, there's like literally, like I'm literally there, like it's she, her face, everything and it was just so strange and, but I just thought of him all this evening and like, this whole thing, experience, and, and this, the, I had this feeling like there was something I need to so clear for myself with it. Like some idea that I, it was terrible. <sighs> that I felt all those things and that I just was so free and that I couldn't even stop myself. <laughs> so I can't believe that we're sitting here and we watch this. Like, so, like, I don't know what it is, but I just. I can't, I can't hold against myself that thought like I did something wrong with it tumbling and tumbling and tumbling out. Like, and as I watched this movie, I thought, like, I'd love that. Like, I just love that feeling of completely being freed up. That's what I felt like. And I didn't even mind. I wasn't even able to judge myself in the moment because it was so happening, all happening so fast. Like, it was overcoming all these things instantaneously. Yeah, and I just, you know, I'm not saying that I don't have it because I'm here or something. I'm just saying I would really love that more and more and more. That just tumbling forth, tumbling forth, out of it, rolling out of all ideas of myself or others. Or mm -hmm. I would just mm -hmm. like it more. Yeah, like more yeah. Like that. That, I think that's why we watched Timer first, because I hadn't seen it, then we watched this. Because the contrast is just the speed up. Imagine that that there was such a thing of past lives and future lives. Imagine that you could go, like in a viewing booth, like defending your life and, and your past life pavilion. You could watch not only all of your past lives, but all your future lives in fast motion. Right. And you could hear everything. And you would watch these patterns repeat over and over. You, it would be fascinating to see these characters. Instead of parallel universes, it's multiple universes, like in Mr. Nobody, but you would get to see it. Because yeah. that very thing, like you felt with, with all, and then all, and seeing, oh, he's with another, and look at her face, and this and this. 
can see it spinning around, it's all mind yeah. doing these games with slight little tweaks and variations that seem to make them different. But then you would start to see the patterns and you would go, oh my goodness. Like uh, Neo, Nemo, nobody saw. And that's what the benefit of Mr. Nobody, he saw all these things playing and playing and playing and playing and he was like, because he was trying to make sense of it. And then when he saw how, how pointless and how impossible the original thing was, the original choice of a little boy having to decide between the love of a mother and father, then he started laughing, laughing, laughing uncontrollably. What a trip! What a trip is time and space. Imagine if you could see all of those lifetimes played out as fast as you seem to be playing that out, you know. Because that's what, you like the feeling of it, there was something impelling you to, mm. to just, to not hold back. I was jumping through things that I've been stuck with for years, like instantly, and I was like, whoa, like, just, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. up for this. Like, <laughs> we could just, you know, yeah. I, because... I don't know, it was like being detangled, or like, what's it, you keep saying, the, the, the debridement. debridement. Yes. Oh. You know, it was like debridement, and it was on a roll, it had its own momentum, and so I didn't even feel like I was doing anything there. The torturous aspect of healing as I've experienced it before was not there, you know, just, yeah. So oh. I learned, I learned so much, even, just even yeah. as it was, like perfect yeah. as it was, like kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm up for that now, and I think like what you're inviting us into is that trust, and that I, I want to trust like that. I don't want to have to keep the safety catch on um, to try and make it safe because it doesn't work like that. Like the trust in that movie and the Family Stone was everything got chaotic, and then that the trust was that it wasn't really chaotic, like it was in divine order. So, like I want, I want safety in that, in the role of it, rather than in the control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can see, like it was beautiful that scene in there where, where he was sleeping and dreaming, and then he started dreaming about that scene in the, the train, the subway train or whatever, which was just a miraculous scene where she just, you know, the guy had a gun, she got up, the spirit just worked through her in the most loving way, as Ira just watched in astonishment. And then after, when they finally got off and they got home, he was super attracted to her, like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to marry a miracle worker. Like, you know, it's, it would have, Abby was suddenly more than Abby. She was like, it was stunning to him. And yet, when he, later on in the movie, when he was falling asleep and he had all of his unconscious fears and suspicions came up, the ego hijacked the miracle scene and turned it entirely for its own purposes, yeah. for fear and doubt. Her kissing <coughs> all the people, then her two exes showing up there, and then her going up and being with, and him going, no, no, you know, that was his fear. The fear is always that the ego is just going to hijack <coughs> the interpretation and take what's totally miraculous, absolutely yeah. miraculous, and just hijack it for its own purposes. And he had to forgive that. In the end, all that just triggered him big time when he got up. You know, he went out, he was wandering, he was seeking, he was searching back again. After he just married her the second time and taken his vows, one unconscious thing from the ego trying to hijack the whole thing. So that just shows you, you know, the, the devotion it takes to the mind training mm to stay open to the miraculous interpretation, because that's the only thing that matters, is the Spirit's interpretation, showing us a, a world that is, is, is beautiful and, and helpful, truly helpful. I am here only to be truly helpful, and how the ego will try to take the same scene, the same scenario, and completely hijack it, just for itself, for its own death wish purposes, guilt, yeah. shame. Yeah, it did with him with the, when he saw the photographs of the two former husbands, yeah. did it in uh, 
eternal sunshine of spotless mind, which she comes home at eight and she's, well, that's what you do to get people to like you, you fuck them, you know. Yeah. That yeah. those egoic attack thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and then the barrage of both of them with the ego attack thoughts, but then in the end, the spirit pulls the rug on that thing and they could hear them like playing and they're like, wait a minute, this is like a sabotage attempt. That then they could feel the love again when they could, when they all got delivered the packages and the the tapes got exposed in mm -hmm. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, it exposed mm -hmm. the ego. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all we're here to do is to expose the lie. Mm -hmm. It's like say, no, let's not. We're not going to buy that interpretation that somebody is doing something against somebody else. But that ties into the roles. And it doesn't so much matter, the roles themselves aren't the problem, it's the identification with them. We're fine with fake dead, just don't lie about it. It's like, can we not be here to, to nurture, to support, to cheer each, other's on, each other on in a blessing way? Like, oh, I bless you in what your, in what your guidance is. I bless you in you hearing what feels intuitive for you and going for that. Instead of judging, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, something wrong with that, that's wrong, you know, that, that tendency of the ego to just point out wrong, 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 instead of just being present, listening, mm -hmm. and, and trusting, seeing that nothing can be threatened. and seeing nothing can be threatened, having faith. Yeah, and experiencing that, and that yeah. piece of exposing. Yeah. It's huge. It is. It is very huge. That's, that was a very good movie, an amazing movie for that, you know, to come to that. Amazing. That's our choice, Jesus calls it faith or faithlessness. Mm. But faithlessness is murder and guilt. And death. There's nothing attractive or helpful about faithlessness. And there's everything wonderful about faith. Because faith has to take you beyond the body's eyes, it has to take you beyond the five senses, yeah. beyond the memories even, the memories of bodies. Yeah. Who did what, who said what, mm -hmm. I couldn't find any truth and sticking to the bodies, and sticking to the memories of bodies. No truth to be found there. So the message is really have faith and be direct, and if you have that moment that comes up, like Ira and Abby had, or like Sarah was taking carpe diem, seize the day, go for it, throw caution to the wind, throw caution to the wind, don't miss it, don't miss that opportunity. It's just trust, you know. She just was in a moment of strong trust, like even though her other relationships had ended in divorce, she just felt like, no, there's something really here. There's something really here. There's something really valuable. She was intuitive and she, she didn't hold back. You might say that faith just triggered the whole movie. It triggered everything that followed like a rapid undoing, a rapid dismantling. Yeah. I mean, her innocence was just the catalyst. Yeah. That was it. It's that powerful. And when she said it, you know, at some point he just said, is, it a, is this a joke? No, it's no joke. Hiding is a joke. But not this kind of faith, it's no joke. 
that's like the innocence that frees the mind. So we watched this first movie, Timer, it was just this <coughs> mechanism on people's wrist of knowing when you met your soulmate and all the waiting and all the game playing and everything that went on and this was more then you can Abby coming in there going and if you're not gonna just settle for timers then go for it yeah carpe diem remember the Robin Williams Captain movie, my Captain. Captain My Captain, stand up on your desk. Carpe diem, seize the day, and watch all the people in the room, Captain My Cam Captain, line up, just like in that scene with Robin Williams, they all, they all gave their allegiance, even though he was getting fired. <laughs> they didn't, the students didn't stop, they gave him their total allegiance. You know, at the end, he, he could see how powerful his mind was, that for him to seize the day was everything. The whole world lined up, the whole classroom lined up back with that. That's powerful. And that other great scene from Goodwill Hunting with Robin Williams, that thing, that it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Over and over and over. Holy Spirit, boom, 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 boom. It's not your fault. And they made humor of that in the, the, the circle there. <coughs> the Holy therapist and everything going, it's, it's the mother's fault. They just had to. It's like it's all good, but it's like we're blaming her. It's like, it's oh. Her. oh. <laughs> it's like the ego is looking for something to. Hit it on. Too much of a leap for a therapist. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not to blame. Right. <laughs> Not to blame. Not to blame at all. No blame, yeah. That's the end of the therapist's role. <laughs> There's no blame. There's no game. <laughs> mm, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Just kind of popped out. I I hadn't seen that movie, so I just saw the... I think I might have. <laughs> Let's just start, I think I saw you this think movie. You might I don't have. know if I watched it to the end. Okay. You got the full ride mm -hmm. tonight. It was fresh. Yeah. <laughs>